Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, everyone. Today is another day that the Lord has made, the 22nd day of February 2019. Today, our meditation will be taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 6. Daniel, chapter 6, and we will read from verse 13 to verse 24. It says, Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to the king and said to him, Remember, O king, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed, and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we trust that this day you speak to us in accent clear. Anoint our ears that we may be able to hear you accurately and precisely. Anoint our hearts also, that as your word fall upon our hearts, it will germinate and bear fruits of righteousness in our lives. Don't just entertain us. Please transform us. Don't just challenge us this day, but cause change to take place in our lives. Have your way, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. My brothers and sisters in Christ, whether we like it or not, in this life we must make choices. And we must be ready to face the consequences of our choices. Sometimes it is easy to anticipate doing the right thing. You know, thinking that the right thing will lead to harsh consequence. You might be thrown into a lion's den. The story of Daniel 
in the lion's den is one of the most loved stories in the Bible. The story is filled with intrigues and twists. Here a king was forced to do something against his wish. It is like kind of a blackmail because he had already given out an order that whoever fails to obey him must be cast into the den of lions. But in this case, I'm sure deep down within his heart, he want Daniel to be spared. But you know, the people came together and said to the king that it is impossible for you to change your decree. And so kind of, it is kind of like a blackmail. Daniel now was taken to the lion's den. And he was cast into the den of lions. But something happened. Before he was thrown into the den of lions, the king said something. He said that he wished that the God of Daniel, whom he had continually served, will spare his life. It was like kind of a prayer for Daniel. And we all know that that kind of prayer was answered by God. So Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And we all know that that is the only day in history that lions fasted. We know that because if you throw somebody into a lion's den, before you can say Jack Robinson, the person will be devoured. In fact, including his bones. But in Daniel's case, the story was different. The, that day, the lions fasted. And while Daniel was busy sleeping in the lion's den, the king was having a rough time. He could not sleep. He could not eat. He could not be entertained. While Daniel, that was supposed to be a victim, had a lion for a pillow, the king, in his own comfortable bed, could not sleep. I think one of the lessons to draw from this is the fact that God will always honor faithfulness. Because Daniel remained faithful to God, even to the point of willing to die, God was with him and delivered him from his enemies and from the power of the lions. All choices have consequences. So as, as, as Christians, we know that we are supposed to make God-honoring choices and remain faithful to God and do what is right. The highest character choices are based on truth and faithfulness to your commitments. So we must dare to be a Daniel. We also must dare to make right choices. Because if we do, God will always honor our faithfulness. God will honor, us, will honor our loyalty to him. It happened that when the day came, Daniel was removed from the den of lions and he was unheard. The Bible recorded that there was no wound, there was nothing that was of any blemish that was seen on his body. He was safe, he was sound, and he was looking good. And so when the king came in the morning, I'm sure he was surprised. He was shocked. But through to it, Daniel was safe. And so when he saw that, he asked the people to bring all those people, accusers of Daniel. They should all be brought. And they were brought there and they were cast into the den of lions. And what happened? 
The Bible said before they touched the floor, they were all devoured, including their bones and everything. I'm sure the lions even lick their blood. So, like I said earlier, we need to make choices. I saw something somewhere. It says, people are often unreasonable. They are irrational and self-centered. But it is incumbent upon us as Christians to forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfishness, of ulterior motives, but you need to be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies, but you need to succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you, but you still need to be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight, but you need to create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous, but be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have, and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. End of God. You know, this story of Daniel tells so much about character. You know, we need to build our character. And we do things not to please men, but to please God. I'm sure some of us, if we were in Daniel's shoes, we would have compromised. But Daniel, over the years, built his character. That no matter the storms, no matter the ups and downs of life, he remained faithful to God. I'm sure when Daniel was to be cast into the den of lions, he was not even thinking that God will free him. I'm sure all that was, he was interested in was just to be faithful, to be loyal to God. But God, being a faithful God, was there. He intervened on his behalf. And that is why when we make choices in life, we must make kind of choices that will honor God. Kind of choices that will bring glory to, to, to God's name. Irrespective of whose earth is God, we must remain faithful to God. And that is the testimony of Daniel. And I ask you today, if you were to be in Daniel's shoe, what would you do? Some of the Christians we see today, because of love for money, love for positions, we even sell our birthrights. But look at Daniel, in the face of death, he maintained his stand. In the face of death, he remained faithful unto God. And so we need to learn from that. You know, the way the world is today, in some climes, you discover that Christianity has become a thing of the past. So many people have compromised their stand. Today we want to go with the Johnsons and the rest. We want to do things to please man. But Daniel was different. And so my call to you today is that you have to dare to be a Daniel. Daniel did not try to escape the consequences of his decision to obey God. And like I said earlier, he didn't know what would happen. He did not make a deal with God to save himself. Daniel was not afraid to die. He may have suspected that God will rescue him, but he could not be sure. Because Daniel chapter 6 verse 22 explains an angel of God was sent to shut the mouths of the lion. And the end of Daniel 23 contains the simple key to Daniel's peace. 
He trusted God. What is your trust? Who do you put your trust in? Do you, you trust your intellectual ingenuity? Your intellectual prowess? What do you trust? Your connections? Like, like we know in Nigeria today, most people are, are put, put their whole trust in their connections, in who they know. But for us as Christians, it is incumbent upon each and every one of us to put our trust in God. Remember, man will fail you, but God will not. In your hour of need, God will always send an angel to give you protection. God is faithful and he will remain faithful in our care. So all we need to do is just to trust him. For even the nitty gritty details of our lives, we need to put our whole trust in him. And in our hour of difficulty, in our hour of need, he will be there. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the testimony of Daniel. We pray that your grace will be sufficient for your children. That in the first of trial, in the first of temptation, in the first of persecution, we will remain strong, putting our whole trust in you. Father, help us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.